This channel contains mature subject matter, so if you're not 19 years or older, don't watch this channel. With that being said, let's get into it. So today is September 13th, and I think it's about time to give you guys another tobacco update. Man, it's been, it's been a long time since I did a tobacco update. Anyways, uh, so what's been going on? Well, I have the Thousand Year Tobacco. Behind that, I have the Kentucky Tobacco, which we'll get to in just a moment. Today, I'm smoking on some Brigham's Own. That is, this is some good stuff. It's a nice aromatic blend. Okay, take a look there. It's good stuff. Yeah, this is one of my favorite aromatic blends. If you haven't ever smoked this, check it out. Hey, let me know in the comments section what you guys are smoking on today. Let me know if you're smoking on a pipe. Let me know if you're uh, smoking on a cigar, cigarettes. A blend. Yeah, this Brigham's own mixture has a very pleasant room note. Smells wonderful to anyone around you. It tastes wonderful and it has a, a very mild uh, tongue burn. I really recommend it. So I'm rocking the sky blue lighter today because that's the only way I'm gonna see the sky. All right, everyone. So this is thanks to the fires in California and Washington and Oregon. So let me know in the comment section uh, if, if these fires have impacted you or how they've impacted you. All right, let's get into these plants. Oh, mm, let's bring them. That is good stuff. Good enough to French inhale. All right, well, first off, plant maintenance. I've been pulling off lots of sucker leaves, uh, all these little branches. Um, you know, there's a couple plants where, you know, that obviously got away from me. And this is a, this is a flower pod starting here. The Kentucky tobacco. actually quite a bit taller than the thousand year and it's still growing I had some caterpillars that was about uh, I think one night I think I just came out the next morning and all that damage was done Due to the location that I had my plants, they got more light in the morning than the afternoon and they started to lean in one direction. Yeah, so here's uh, the plants that are on the inside row and the plants that were on the outside row. So they were leaning towards the sun and I thought, hey, I'll spin them the other way around and then they'll uh, start leaning back the other direction. They did not. No, they did not do that. And I think, they're all okay, except for this one plant here. I decided to put a piece of bamboo in. I do believe this one was reaching critical mass. I think it would have broken if I didn't put the bamboo in there. Thank you. 
This is an example of a 1000 year tobacco plant, which has been allowed to grow without any pruning. Notice the size difference of the leaves, how small they are, and just how much seeds tobacco actually produces. Some of these seed pods and flowers are still very young and they're going to take a while before they mature and produce seeds. But a lot of them closer to the top of the plant are completely ready for harvest. The way I know I'm ready to harvest my plants is when the seed pod is completely brown and I usually like to see the seed pod split open at least a tiny bit. So I've went ahead and I've taken a whole bunch of seeds off of this plant. Uh, all I did is I located the branches that had uh, the most mature seed pods and I just removed those branches and then I let the rest go for now. And if you don't remove the seed pods before a heavy rain, they do have a tendency to rot. All right, so what I've done is I've chopped some uh, branches down uh, with good clusters of pods. I've put them uh, just into a bag and once I bring them home, I just dump them all onto a plate. So they're gonna sit on this plate right now. Oh, look at all the seeds stuck to here. It's really sticky. You can see just by all the bugs and you can see the little beads of sap there. Tobacco is very, very sticky. Okay, so this is gonna dry up. Uh, it's gonna sit for a couple weeks probably. Everything will be nice and dry. And uh, you can just, just shake it. I just shake it all off into the plate and uh, all the seeds just fall right off. Once these seeds are all dried up and ready to go, I'll do another seed giveaway video and I'll uh, give away some more tobacco seeds for everybody to grow in uh, 2021. Just for comparison, here's a Kentucky tobacco seed, seed pod, next to a thousand year. Just for a comparison. Last but not least, what I want to touch on in this video is when to harvest your tobacco plants. So, thousand year and Kentucky, from my experience, need to be harvested a little bit different. So as the leaves get more mature, you start to see, see that little bit of yellowing on the leaves there? It's losing some of the chlorophyll. See that? A little bit, just a little bit of spotting at this point. Um, yeah, this plant really does have the most right now. This one's the closest, I think. So the leaves start to show kind of a, a blotchy yellowing like that. So when all the leaves have started to yellow, probably closer to that leaf at the bottom, um, but I wanna see large patches of yellowing like that on all the leaves on the plant. At that point, I chop down the entire thousand year tobacco plant and hang it up as one whole piece. That will hang dry for about 10 weeks before I ferment. Now, the Kentucky tobacco matures a little bit different. Now, I don't think these rules are set. I think you can harvest any way you want, to be honest, but I think you're supposed to also go by the, the type of tobacco too, because they all mature a little differently. This one will mature from the bottom up. So uh, I'm not gonna harvest this leaf right now. I might just throw it right in the garbage or the compost. This leaf is starting to turn a little bit yellow, but once that has more yellowing, once it has more yellowing, then I will go ahead and I will be removing just, uh, just the, a couple leaves at a time uh, from the bottom up. And then the leaves get hung in small bunches tied on the stems and hung up to hang dry. So that's how that works. Uh, just go by the color of the leaves, thousand year, chop hole, hang it, Kentucky, 
uh, just harvest uh, the lower leaves as they turn yellow and you'll do probably multiple harvests on your Kentucky. If you're in Chilliwack or you know you're going to be passing through Chilliwack, check out Fraser Valley Greenhouse Supply. This is where I go to get all my dry amendments, my seaweed, everything that I use to grow, these guys supply me. All I do is I give them a call and they'll order in whatever I need and whatever quantity that I need. It's a one-stop shop for whatever growing method you choose. They'll help you out with hydroponics, with deep water culture, living organic, cocoa. They have it all and they have everything you need to get set up. The gentlemen at this store are willing to negotiate prices and they're also willing to price match. They also have a selection of different used equipment which is really nice when you're trying to save a buck. So the next time you guys need something, give these guys a call. 